Aloha again, everyone. We're going to get started. Again, mahalo nui to all of you for being here. We're really excited. Uh, we are working on the connections, but we're going to get started. So my name is uh, Murph Kirishima, and I am the administrator for Parent and Alumni Relations here. Lori Waraka here is the high school, middle school parent coordinator who does a lot of this, so I want to acknowledge Lori. Um, we're going to open with Pule, which I have the privilege to do, and then we're going to have just a few words from some of our administrators, and then we're going to get right into this program so that we can go through everything, and then there'll be time for question and answers, okay? So if you'll join me in Pule. Father in heaven, we are so very grateful to all be gathered here this night to learn and grow and find out as parents and ohana all that we can to support our students here at Kamehameha in grade 10. We're so grateful for the blessings of all of our lives, especially uh, the blessing of Kamehameha for our children and for our families. Grateful for the vision of our, our princess, Bernice Pawahi, and pray that we will be mindful of our kuleana to, to go forward. We are grateful for all that are here tonight to learn as parents and family, to share as uh, school staff and administrators, counselors, teachers. Uh, we mahalo all of them. We pray for uh, an evening of growth. And at the end of our night together, we pray for a safe journey home. We're grateful for our uh, IT folks, our AV folks who have put so much time into this ability to share with those who are not able to be here and pray that all things will, will go well. We love thee so much, grateful for all that we have, and ask these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so I would like to first introduce the administrator, uh, principal of the high school, Mrs. Sheena Alaya Alayasa, and VP, Mrs. Randy Torres Pang, and the two poorest tanks, sorry. I got the other one right. I, got, I never write them down. Randy Ann, but first, uh, Mrs. Alayasa. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I sat there for a good 30 seconds saying, let's practice my name, Merv. She still gets it wrong. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's check on your grading. <laughs> I just want to welcome you here, and it's so exciting for us to have this kind of conference or this kind of meeting to be able to say where we're going with our, not only education, but with what we need as tools, resources for us as parents to be able to support our students. Naviance is gonna be a huge thing. I'm pretty sure that you've in, been introduced to it before, but it helps us to put all things in one place. And the reason why is so that on the back end, when that 12th grade is, Colleges will be able to go into one area and just pick out all that information. So there's a lot of things happening. We've got guidance counseling. We've got um, our academic counseling to help our kids understand where we want to go. Our college counseling is to say, is here to say, okay, what do we need to get there to? What do we need to get into college? Our curriculum coordinators are here to say, these are the courses that we're providing. We're trying to do education a little different. Of course, this is a big ship. We're gonna have to turn it and turn it a little slower, but we'll still get to the end result of providing the very best education that we can. And that is our whole premise, is that we're Kamehameha students. We're Kamehameha school. We have something to be able to give back. When we go to either colleges to visit, or if we go into a different school, perhaps, we'll have solid foundations as to say, first and foremost, we know who we are, and we know where we're going. Secondly, we'll be able to say our education has prepared us for that. We've been visiting colleges where our students have been, and you know, as I talk to the recruiters, the first thing they say is, our kids are articulate. They know what they want to say, they know how to say it, and they get their point across very clearly. That is a bonus for our kids. They can take that skill anywhere and be successful. That's what we want to do with our students. And support from parents is something that we need. We can't just ask you, please help, we need it. We need to be partners in education. That's the exciting part. Um, it's really exciting when you've got a whole alumni behind us saying, 
rah, 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 let's go. We're ready to go and we're ready to help support no matter where our kids are going. That also is something that probably isn't done too often, but we've got a network of about 13, th uh, how many? Yeah. Yeah, a little shy of um, my 10,000, about over 20,000 alumni. That's a lot of people to tap into and our resources for it. And our kids sitting around these tables right now will be able to benefit from it. So we're excited about our development. We're excited about the route that we're taking, the direction that we're going in, and the focus that we have on giving kids experiences and learning and skills. They know their skills, they can transfer it no matter where. If they've got the confidence and the courage to be able to stand up and do what they need to do, they'll be successful no matter what they wanna do. Those are the persistence and grit pieces that we're talking about today. So I am excited and grateful that you at home give me a shout to your TV. I heard it, <laughs> right on. And here at school, you know, just can, um, thank you for making your child's learning. Sorry, <laughs> that is mine. <laughs> he is two and he thinks he owns the world. But that's confidence, right? <laughs> Give them all the confidence you can and they'll be successful. But again, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out and let's I mean, get this kind of program on the way. And like one of our teachers say is, we more. So thank you very much. And I'll pass the time over to Randy. Randy Terris Pye. I've been called worse. Um, but I just want to say class of 2020, just listening, I am so excited for you at the threshold of so many wonderful things happening at Kamehameha. And it's like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do and who do you want to be? And I think being at Kamehameha, it's about the academics, the values, um, your Hawaiian and Christian um, foundation. So this is a fabulous class. And I know the parents, you support your students. So tonight is the beginning of the rest of your lives to see what is available for you. Um, we have some really great people where, I mean, it's a pleasure to serve your students. And we have in our group some really great people and awesome people to here to work with you for the four years. Um, our curriculum coordinator um, back there, the college counselors, as well as our counselors. And I'm going to introduce them to you, um, Ms. Chong and Ms. Shelby. Please give them a round of applause. And I want to say it is a pleasure to serve your families and the class of 2020. Just a couple more acknowledgements. We have the director of counseling, Samantha Landry Smith, back there. She is also outreach for what grade level, Samantha? Ninth grade. Ninth grade. And we also have Mrs. Debbie Lindsay, our Hope Pookula, who dropped in to, to check it out. So, mahalo. Mrs. Lindsay for being here. We also have our uh, ATP president right here, Ms. Nadine Jakang. So mahalo for coming. At this time, we're gonna go right into our program and that is our grade level counselors, Mrs. Shelby and Mrs. Chung, who are gonna take the next few minutes. All right. So we are gonna be talking about graduation requirements and then after I address that, then we're gonna have some other people talk about dual credits and then summer school. Okay, sorry about this. On the screen, it, the, the format is a little off, but um, so students need 24 credits to graduate. They need 24 total. Some students will end up with more. They would earn more by either taking summer school or sometimes, in some cases, they'll overload during the year. A normal full schedule is six credits. So six credits for each year will equal the 24 total credits to graduate. On the left side here, if you're looking, the solid credits. Solid credits are those in the subject areas listed there. So English, social studies, math, science, language, and speech. Those would be like core subject areas. And then on the right side, those are the required non-solid credits. So I'm first just gonna quickly go through on the solid credit side. Um, English is the only subject area that needs four credits. So every year, students will take a full year of English. A full year course equals one credit. A one semester course is 0.5 credit because it's half of the year. 
So English is four credits or four years. Social studies is three and a half credits. So just about every year, students will take social studies. It's quite structured. Ninth grade, they take Hawaiian culture. And then 10th grade social studies is world history. Junior year, they take US history. And then in either junior year or senior year, they take a one semester economics class and then a one semester of Hawaiian history. A Little bit different for the Kauhali students, they took Hawaiian culture and then Hawaiian history during their freshman year. All the other students will take the Hawaiian history course in either 11th or 12th grade. The math requirement is three credits. Uh, we do strongly encourage students to take four credits if possible of math, but three is the requirement. Science is three credits. Typically it's biology, chemistry, and then physics. There are some other science selective options. And then language is a two-year requirement. I will talk on the next slide about the Hawaiian language proficiency, but for the purpose of graduation with the language subject area, it's a two-credit requirement. Speech is a one-credit requirement. Half a credit happens in ninth or 10th grade, and then the other half in 11th and 12th. On the other side, where the required non-solid uh, non credits are listed, students take personal health. That's a one-semester class in either ninth or 10th grade and then PE is underneath that. That's a one and a half credit requirement. Ninth grade, they take a one semester course, so you guys will remember that from last year, that was in the second semester, and they did a run or swim. In 10th grade, they take a one year requirement, so one credit, that's what they're doing right now, and then in the second semester, they will have a culminating PE event, a biathlon, so that'll be in May, just like how they did last year, but they'll do a run and a swim. The performing arts requirement, that can be done in ninth through 12th grade. So at any point before they graduate, it's a point five, so one semester, and that could be singing in chorus, playing an instrument like beginning ukulele, guitar, if they're in band. It could also be through intro to theater. Um, and then we also have some dance course options as well as Hawaiian Chana dance. The visual arts requirement is a point five credit requirement that also can be taken at any point between ninth and 12th grade. Most kids meet it through taking art history. Um, there are some other options that we go over with the students. Okay, now on this slide, these are the non-credit requirements. So these are things that basically they just need to do, even though they're not gonna earn a credit. So a Colosea, that's um, the ninth through 12th grade class that will show up in their schedule for one quarter. So one quarter each school year, that's their religious education course, Christian education class at Colosea. They also attend chapel about once a month as a grade level. The chapel takes place during homeroom time. Guidance, so every year we have about six to 10 guidance sessions, some in small groups like classroom sized groups, and then sometimes as a class, almost like a assembly or class meeting style. That would happen every year. And then school service, that's a one quarter requirement in 10th grade and then one quarter in 11th grade. PE doesn't stop after 10th grade. So in 11th and 12th grade, the format's a little different. It's a non-credited course. Um, it's scheduled all year, but they meet about once a week with a PE teacher to check in and then they train on their own. They keep a training log and we'll go over this more with the students in detail and then the PE does a lot more direct information about how to do it, but they do have PE, it's just slightly different format than in ninth and 10th grade. Okay, so the Hawaiian language proficiency. So on the previous slide, we talked about the two-year language requirement. So those two years have to happen in the same language. The options are Mandarin, Hawaiian, Japanese, or Spanish, and they do have to progress. So if they start in Spanish one, they would need to take Spanish two to meet the two-year requirement. They couldn't pair up like, Japanese one and Hawaiian one to meet the two years. It does need to be in the same language. For the Hawaiian language proficiency, that's not necessarily um, where they would need to take more than one year. So usually students can meet it by taking Hawaiian one and they need to earn a C minus or better. Another option would be they can take a skills assessment and it looks at four different skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And that would be if they have a background in the language so they could just go ahead and take the assessment they don't need to take Hawaiian one. So it's kind of like two different ways. Most kids take the Hawaiian one course to meet the op, the, um, that requirement. Um, on the other side of the column there, swimming proficiency, that's handled through PE. Then there are all those special events that we look forward to. So Founders Day, Song Contest, Baccalaureate, and Commencement. And then finally, senior year, they will have a service day 
Um, they either go out by homeroom or sometimes the whole grade will go to a place and they'll help and it'll be coordinated through school. All right, so this slide, whoops. This slide for some reason is not, okay. So this should be a slide that shows you a template year by year year by year with different columns. And many of you are familiar with that when your student was in ninth grade. So I'm gonna move ahead. We do have an electronic version in KS Connect, but it does also on that hard copy template, I'm sorry it's not showing right now, but it does have those same lists of requirements by subject area. And it also helps remind the students that they need 24 total credits. So it's basically like the information from the first slide, but laid out with the columns for each grade level. We use it in guidance each year. It's like a worksheet for the students, we update it. And Michelle B and I have a binder of the students for your plans that they filled out last year. And then in guidance, they'll update it this school year. So just so you have an idea for registration. So I know that creates some stress for parents, but um, the good thing is you can view it in KS Connect. And I will show that in some um, next, next slides. But just so you know an idea of timing, in the last week of November, we'll be going over with the students how to register. So they register in KS Connect. The process won't happen though until after Christmas break. So the guidance will be the first step at the end of November. Um, this has the class of 22, so I'm sorry, this is an old slide, but, and then in January, the teachers input their recommendations. And then in the middle of January to early February time, the registration will open in KS Connect. The window is a little, seems a little tight, but because they've already been talking about it since November with us, it ends up being enough time. And then they also have time during homeroom to work on it. So really whenever they have unscheduled class time, they can work on it at home, at school, um, and then in homeroom there's sort of designated time. And then right below that in January and February, summer school registration happens. It's usually a very short window and fills up really fast. And our summer school director is gonna be talking a little later, so if you have more um, questions specific to that, she can help with that. And then finally, in early February, that window for registration will end. So summer school kind of happens within the overall window of registration. The process is kind of different, but they're both housed in KS Connect. Okay, so these are some screenshots of, if you have your laptop, you are welcome to go into KS Connect to see what your view would look like. It should look similar to this screenshot here. Um, on the left-hand menu, you have the registration choice. And then once you click on that, there should open up, I believe, four, um, four links underneath there. So course requests, summer school, plan, and recommendations should be the four choices you see. Right now, it'll have last year's information on there, um, but you're welcome to view what happened last year. And then when this year's registration process starts, you can see what your son or daughter is putting in there. And then you can maybe have a conversation if you have any concerns or questions about it with them. So you can view that from your login. If you click on the plan um, link under the registration in KS Connect, you can view if your son or daughter has used this in the past. And we do update this in guidance as well. So we hand them the hard copy one and then they can also input the electronic. So the hard copy one's good because they can just keep it with them if they ever want to do it, um, and then the electronic one is another option too. So it should look kind of sort of like this, but they won't have necessarily the same things in there. And then if you click on the recommendations button, that's the part where the teachers would be inputting the recommendations. So this year's teachers make the recommendation for next year's courses. Um, they'll do that in January. Okay, this is just a sample of a student who put in their course requests. So this is the way that they register. So in KS Connect, they, if they already have their plan in for 11th grade, they can just roll over the data. They won't need to individually add courses. If they don't have it in their plan, it's okay. They can still add in the courses individually. Um, the course catalog that's in KS Connect right this moment is for this school year. The one for next school year will come on um, in time for the registration time. So the students will have this whole thing um, in there for their course request for 11th grade, and then it'll tell them exactly, like is it a one credit course, a half a year course, which is a half credit, and anything else that they need, like if they need alternates. 
Um, that's one thing about the course request. It doesn't guarantee them that they'll get it. It's not a real-time thing for all these classes. Um, and so if they don't get their first choice, like for an elective, then having good alternates is very important. It allows them to have some backups. OK, and then finally, um, our honors diploma criteria. So we talk about this in guidance as well. And then we also have a special, like during homeroom, if they just want to ask us questions and go over it again. Um, a lot of parents and students get a little confused. The seven credits needed for the honors program are seven total credits. They can have more. Um, but the seven credits they need can be a combination of honors classes, AP courses, and dual credit courses. So it doesn't need to be seven honors courses plus additional AP and dual credit. It can be seven total. Um, seven would be the minimum. Of those seven, um, the next bullet is that two must be advanced placement courses or dual credit. So the AP or DC courses fall within those seven. We do have students that earn more, um, but if they're looking like, okay, what's the bottom line? It would be that they need seven and two of the courses need to be AP or, or dual credit. Um, and then if you look in the parentheses, it says minimum one and a half credits. That's just because some of the AP or dual credit courses may be a semester course or it may be a year course. So it is possible for a student to take a one year AP course and then a one semester dual credit or AP course to finish that one and a half minimum requirement. One of those AP or DC courses must happen during senior year. Um, the only sort of other way to do it would be the fourth, fifth, or sixth year of a language could be um, counted as one of those AP or dual credit courses senior year. Um, so that would be an exception. So it might be called Honors Hawaiian 5, but if it's taken senior year, it could count as one of those two AP or dual credit courses, if that makes sense. And then we do go over this with kids, and if you have questions later, we will have a question time at the end. And then right under that, there is a GPA requirement for honors diploma. So they need a three and a half minimum cumulative grade point average. So that's for all the classes they've taken since the summer right before ninth grade. And then a weighted average in the honors and AP and dual credit courses needs to be 3.0 or higher. That's a weighted GPA. Okay, so that was kind of like a speed round of going through everything. Um, right after me is the dual credit people. Okay. So um, Pua Higa and Catherine Kekaulike are going to come up next and talk more about dual credits. But um, Michelle B and I will be available for questions at the end about any of these requirements and honors diploma things that I went over. Thank you. Valina Mai, I'm Catherine Kekaulike. I am the post-secondary program director um, as of three weeks ago. So I've been a college counselor here for 17 years, and so now I'm over college counseling and easing into dual credit. So I just, those of you watching, I just want to make sure you know that the camera adds at least 10 pounds. So once we got that out of the way. Okay. So now moving into dual credit. So I want you to think about this like kind of an academic buffet, right? You have the whole buffet line. What do I want? So sometimes you just really own over something, and sometimes your mother's like, you need to eat the vegetables, right? So why am I doing this? What am I going to put on my students that are here onto my academic plate, right? Because you're going to be eating that all year long. So why am I going to do this? What's the end in sight? For those of you who are lifting or playing football, some of you want to bulk up. Some of you want to lean down so you can get a better time for a run or what have you. So why are we doing this? Why are we choosing these courses? So when we talk about dual credit, let's first make sure we're all speaking the same language. What is dual credit? So this is an opportunity to take a course that will give you credit both at Kapalama High School and a college. So you're taking one course, but you have kind of one foot in both worlds, and you're able to get credit for the same course on both sides of the fence. Does that make sense? OK. Okay, so my able assistant. So how do I know, because this is making sense that that would be a good thing, but there's, I just heard about this honors diploma and dual credit can work with honors courses and AP courses, so how are these differentiated? How do I know what I would want to do? For dual credit, you're getting both sides. So as long as you pass the course, which is really important, so please, 
please, parents and students, understand when you enroll in a dual credit course, you are beginning your college transcript. There are no mulligans. So when you started ninth grade, you got an academic mulligan or a do-over. So always forgiven from middle school. Like, should, should you have had a bad grade or a really bad flu or what have you? Always forgiven. And then you started ninth grade, and you got a fresh start on that transcript. When you start a dual credit course, you are beginning your college transcript. So if you stick that landing, you're in great shape. Should you flounder or get the flu or not take that seriously, you are impacting your college, okay? So it's a great opportunity, but something that you need to take very, very seriously. Um, they are following that university curriculum. So we are either vetting our curriculum through the university or they are teaching their curriculum here on our campus. You must opt in. So for the courses that we are offering, say for example, some of the um, courses from Hawaii Pacific University, our course curriculum content has been vetted through the university. The same instructor is offering that as dual credit and non-dual credit, but it's the same course content. So students must opt in and get through the additional processes and paperwork for dual credit. Does that make sense? You're in the same course, but you can say, yeah, I, I'm, we're gonna take just an honest moment and I'm not ready to start my college transcript. I'm just gonna get through this in high school and, and what have you, okay? Um, and then it's gonna be on your college transcript also, so you're gonna have a legitimate college transcript. By taking that dual credit, it's also weighted. So those of you that are looking at your GPA or what have you, it is weighted on that five-point scale, okay? Um, and part of the reasoning for that when we first started was you're taking a college-level course, so that should be how kind of carry more weight, yeah? Now, for advanced placement, those AP courses, those courses are rigorous. You're getting that high school credit here on our campus, and it's an opportunity to get college credit should you take the AP exam at the end of the course and score well on it. So that credit is not necessarily guaranteed. For most colleges nationwide, you're looking at a three, four, or a five on that AP exam. It's a nationally based curriculum, so it's kind of more standardized. So sometimes if you think about when I go to college, I'm probably gonna take English 100 or what have you. That course can be vastly different even though most colleges nationwide will offer it, but the rigor of that course, the size of that course, the content of that course still may be very, very different. For the AP courses, that's much more of a standardized curriculum nationwide. And those AP exams are, of course, standardized nationwide. So the more selective colleges in the nation, so if you're looking, again, why are we doing this? If you're looking at applying very, very selectively, the Ivy League, um, those schools that take, um, have many more applicants than seats available, they prefer those AP courses, okay? If you're looking to stay home um, and attend one of our local universities or stick maybe closer on the West Coast, you may want to do the dual credit. Now, the dual credit's not gonna hurt you, but if you're trying to best position yourself for selective admissions, you really should be pursuing AP courses. I'm gonna say it that simply, okay? Those are the courses that the colleges are gonna want, um, those really, really selective. To be taking those courses, you need a recommendation from your instructor um, for the next level, or you need to be waived in, sign a waiver into that course. Um, and again, it, there is research from College Board, which AP is a product of theirs, that even by taking those AP courses, even if you don't do as well on that exam, you're increasing your persistence at the college level because you, through struggling through that course and bearing down academically, you're actually increasing your odds at persisting not only through that course but through college as well. So you're learning, it is very rigorous, but that rigor is helping increase your skill set, which is applicable for all of your academics to come after that. Does that make sense? Are these clear? Okay. Um, and again, that's also on the five-point scale, so you get the bump for that as well. So some of the current partnerships that Kamehameha has are with Hawaii Pacific University, which I mentioned, um, UH Manoa um, STEM programs, which is a science, technology, um, English, math, is brewing with Shamanad. Um, and then we also have some with the local community colleges as well. So when you're thinking about, okay, so I now kind of understand why I would want to do which or how that might impact me or my transcript, how do I know if that dual credit is going to be transferable? 
What you're going to want to check is the receiving college. So again, why am I doing this? I want to end up at, you know, I'm a sophomore. I'm not really sure, but there's a handful of colleges that are on my radar or I've heard about or I'm considering. On their website, you can actually check which courses are transferable, okay? Um, so that's something you'd want to take a look at as you're making these decisions. I'm going to hand the mic over to my colleague, Dr. Puahiga, to give you more details on um, how these dual credits are working. Aloha. I'm the curriculum coordinator at the high school, and my job today is to kind of give you a highlight reel on what kind of courses you can take uh, as dual credit in the spring as well as next year. So I'm going to just highlight two different programs, two schools that we work with. You have HPU and UH Manoa Academy. Okay? So if you look across, both of them you need to opt in. Okay? So it's really important that the student wants to do this. It's a they, they need to be personally motivated because they're the one who is going to be the doing of the work. Okay? The difference between HPU, HPU, there's no minimum SAT or GPA requirement. For Manoa Academy, there's a 2.8 GPA, as well as a 510 reading and 510 math SAT requirement. So in order to be eligible for any course in Manoa Academy, you have to have that GPA, and I'll explain why. HPU offers courses uh, from 9th through 12th grade. Manoa Academy, only 11th and 12th grade. So it's really critical for you when you're looking at the course catalog this year to make sure the courses that you're going to be taking as juniors are dual credit, if this is something you're interested in. For HPU, you are admitted as a special status student. That means you're non-degree seeking. But for UH Manoa Academy, you are provisionally admitted as a student, conditionally until you graduate from high school, which is why they have the 2.8 requirement. So it's almost like you're getting an early admit to the school, to UH Manoa. For both institutions, you need proof of MMR. So when you were you know, one or two and you had to go to the doctor and get those series of shots, that would be all you would need to prove for the MMR. They also ask for you to have a tuberculosis test within 12 months of the first day of your class. So even though you did one for Kamehameha as a freshman, if you're a, sophomore, a junior taking it, you'll need to take another uh, TB shot. So we're working with Haleola so that you can also, that's one option if you're a boarder. Uh, day students can also sign up to take their TB shot at Haleola or you can go to your personal physician. Difference with HPU, HPU vetted our teachers as well as our curriculum. So you would be getting a, a vetted curriculum but a Kamehameha Schools teacher. Whereas with UH Manoa Academy, you're doing UH's curriculum, and they are bringing the instructor to collaborate with our KS instructor. Both, again, are five-point uh, grade weighting. HPU, they vetted our KS Kumo, and the UH instructor, again, will come and collaborate with our high school teacher. So these are some of the courses for spring 2018. So if you are in one of these classes, you will have the opportunity uh, to apply for dual credit. The classes that are in green are classes for juniors and seniors. So when you're registering, if you're interested in some of these courses, you can apply for them um, during registration. So this year we have Japanese three and four, advanced speech, and then it also says which school it is. Uh, Literature of the Pacific is a senior English elective class. We have a new class this year with Windward Community College. It's botany. After one year, you take nine credits, college credits, and you will get a certificate of agropharmatech. So you actually leave after one year of botany classes with this certification. Also, we have honors economics and intro to political science. So both are gen ed courses. Um, that's our focus is to try to get as many of the gen eds so that they have the highest rate of transferability. So looking ahead to next year, besides the courses that you just saw, um, we are going to be working on a cybersecurity dual credit class with Honolulu Community College. We're also looking at two math classes, so college alge and trigonometry with KCC, Project Juliana, which is in our performing arts department, as well as music and technology with HCC. We also have a business class, digital tools, that's in the technology and business department. 
And then in science, we're looking with, uh, to work with Shamanad on our human anatomy and physiology. So as you can see, we have certain classes in many of our content areas. So hopefully there's something that uh, all of you will find in of interest. And just to give you a shout out, on December 19th, everybody will get an email with our course catalog so they can kind of get a sense of what courses they want to look at. Um, it will also identify by the descriptions an icon that will say if it's dual credit ready. So you're probably wondering what, do I, what else do I need to do? So these are the things basically that you would need to complete in order to become eligible for dual credit. Talked about the college form. You're actually filling out the college application form. The first four uh, pieces up there are all from the university. So you're actually filling out the actual uh, admissions application for the university. So the registration form, the FERPA. The FERPA allows the institution to give us the grades so that we can kind of have that for your transcripts. What's in red is the most important thing and the one that we have the most challenges getting from parents and students is the health clearance. So the MMR that I talked about, as well as the TB, okay? You know how hard it is to get into your doctor if you wanna get it, you gotta get your appointments in early. So if you think you might be interested in dual credit next year, get your shot soon, okay? We also have KS forms. Um, a parent acknowledgement form as well as an agreement form so that you as a parent know what your child is uh, applying for. The first four uh, pieces you don't have to sign uh, because it's a college form and so they're, your child is actually filling it out, they sign it themselves. So the only signed forms that you will sign will be the KS forms. So here is our website if you're interested in seeing um, the paperwork, everything is linked. Um, our our blog here is uh, blogs.ksbe.edu backslash KSK dual credit backslash. And if you can see on the top, it has all of the different content areas. If you click on the content area, it will show you what classes are available, show you the deadlines as well as um, forms that you can fill out. We also have uh, an email that you can send all your forms to. And if you have any other questions, you can feel free to send us dual credit at ksbe.edu, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, summer school. This is Kella Park, our director of summer school. Hi, everybody. I apologize for my voice. It's a little weird, but that's okay. Summer school. Why is summer school important? Why do we do summer school? Most of your kids come to summer school because it's in, oh shucks, so am I supposed to stand still? Awesome, I, I don't know how to stand still. It's important that I see everybody. All right, summer school, why is summer school important? It allows our children to take classes that they need to graduate and still take the classes that they wanna take during the school year, like I wanna be a band person for four years, or I wanna be in concert glee for three years. Oh, you guys are band parents. Awesome. Um, I wanna be in leadership. I want to do, what else do we do, gang? Hawaiian ensemble, ceramics. I wanna take drawing and painting every year for my whole life at Kamehameha. Okay, but there's also other millions of other things that kids can do. They can do TV production. Oh, sorry. They can do TV production, they can do scuba diving, they can do lifeguarding, they can do all kinds of things. One of the beautiful things about being here at Kamehameha is there is a parethora, is that the right word? Awesome. There is that here at Kamehameha, right? How do they get to do that? They gotta come to summer school so that they can take what they want during the school year. And so I have the awesome job of trying to figure out how to provide for your kids, okay? So that's the positive about summer school. What am I offering in summer school that allows your students to take advantage now of dual credit? Take advantage of this thing called online learning, which is awesome. I tell everybody I did my master's degree online. If I could have gone from kindergarten to master's degree online, I would have done it. Because I'd have to deal with people. I could just be with me and my computer and life is good. But on the flip side of that, I had this boy take this Hawaiian history online class with me. And after the class, he came up to me, he said, Auntie, I'm not ever taking online again. 
I said, how come? He said, Auntie, animal friends. How are you supposed to learn if animal friends? And I said, well, didn't you learn a valuable lesson? Now when you go to college and they tell you take online classes, what you going to tell them? Oh, no, 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 that's not for me. I'm not going to waste my parents' money taking online classes because it's not for me. We provide opportunities that they don't usually get. And so I'm super excited to let you know that we're providing some things. Now, economics online, um, the other reason we, we're trying to increase our online services is because we know that a lot of kids travel for sports and that kinds of things. The biggest reason that I'm trying to increase my online is for our boarding population. I want our boarded children to have the same opportunities that your students have. By coming to summer school, they can be in band, and they can be in orchestra, and they can be in Hawaiian Six, because it's important for them too. So a lot of my online opportunities right now is preference to borders. Economics, honors economics online preference to borders. If you're seriously interested because your student cannot do face-to-face -face summer school, get on the wait list. We will take, I took 30 students last year, 25 of them were boarders, four of them were not. So, so we're, we're starting, okay? What else do I offer during summer school that has a lot to do with this dual credit? Advanced speech, same class they take during the school year, we will offer during the summer. Hawaiian 290, guys, I'm super excited about this one. This is the first time we're going to do a pilot program, Hawaiian 290. It's with uh, KCC. If our students pass Hawaiian 290, they will walk out of that class with 20 credits from community college, 20 language credits. They will have been tested to be proficient in the language to have gotten Hawaiian 101, 102, 201, and 202. And 290, 20 credits. Obviously, that means they have to be somewhere. They have to be at least at Hawaiian 4 level. Taking Hawaiian 4, we will also consider Hawaiian 3. If that is something that you're interested in, take my class. Okay, guys? I see brother over here putting it in his computer. Take my class. <laughs> 290, I'm super excited. Pilot class that we're doing this summer. Um, I also do UH Manoa. Again, Manoa has requirements. GPA requirements, as well as PSAT, SAT requirements. We're going to offer Hawaiians ES221. That class counts as Hawaiian history credit. That is a graduation requirement. Um, psychology, sociology, those are elective credits, but very popular credits during the school. I'm also offering, that's not here, oh, yeah, not here. Uh, UH Manoa Academy will offer economics, which is also a graduation requirement. So if you're looking for dual credit opportunities, graduation requirements, those two do it. Um, my classes, I can only offer courses that students want to take. So a lot of these classes are dependent on the number of children that we get to take them. So please be aware of that. Uh, I'm assuming that most of you have tried to get summer school classes and you know that they fill very, very quickly, most of them. My economics class fills in 27 seconds, okay? That's two classes of 24, which is 48, plus 48 kids on the wait list. My economics class fills in 27 seconds. These are options, other options. Um, but know that summer school feels that quickly. Look for different options. There's, there's ways. There's ways for us to do different things. Um, but just be aware that summer school can only offer courses that fill 15 kids or more. So if this class doesn't fill and I only have 10 students, then I cannot run the course. Okay? So just keep that in mind. If you guys really want to take it, I'm talking to the kids out there. Get your kids, your friends to jump on with you. Let's, let's fill these classes so that we can offer more opportunities. Okay, the last thing. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that we're doing in partnership with parents and alumni relations is we're going to be, we're, we have offered for the last two years internships for our seniors, rising seniors, grade 11 going to 12. We've offered what we call internships with our alumni and our parents. These children have a full job work job opportunity. They get e elective credit, one, one credit. <coughs> I apologize. They get an elective credit, but what's wonderful about this opportunity for our kids is they actually go out and they're in the workforce. So they spend a few days with us in the classroom learning about how to dress, how to talk, how to email, how to answer a phone. We assume that they know that, and I'm going to tell you, most of them do. 
but we make sure before we send them out into the workforce. So after we do that, the kids spend four weeks, 30 to 40 hours a week at work. <coughs> Let me tell you a quick story. Last year we had um, this boy, two years ago, first year, he went out and, and we talked with the kids after to find out what their thing is and he told me, Auntie, you know what the hardest thing is? I only have 45 minutes to eat lunch. I gotta figure out where I gonna eat lunch. Then I gotta go stand in line to buy my lunch and then I gotta figure out who I gonna eat with because I, my friends are not there. When we talk about work experience for our kids, we're talking about work experience. You get dressed, you go. So I said, okay, so let's problem solve. How do we fix this? I don't know, lunch is expensive. Okay. <laughs> Number one, be grateful to Pawahi for providing lunch every day. You don't need pay. But two, how do we fix this? I guess I could get up earlier, make myself a lunch, and take lunch to school. I said, see? You learned something new already. Wonderful work experience for our kids. Another quick, quick story, I'm sorry. Another quick story. We had three kids go out, two kids go out to the Wai'anae Medical Comprehensive Center this, this last summer. They were able to experience all kinds of things in this medical center. They saw pediatrics, they saw surgery, they saw dentistry, but they also were able to sit down with the elder kupunas out at the Wai'anae Medical Center and learn about Native practices. Those girls were able to connect with, with what we're trying to teach our kids, with, our, with, their, with their kupuna, with what was done before. And it was such an awesome experience and something that they won't forget. They also decided on things that they didn't want to do. No sense you be a medical person if you can't handle blood. They figured that out. Real quick for some, yeah? So what we're trying to do with these internships is provide that kind of opportunity. What we're adding this summer, or hoping to add, is for rising juniors, that's you guys, right? Sophomores going to be juniors. We're gonna add what we're calling job, job shadowing. This is an opportunity for kids to become <coughs> aware of different opportunities. So it's not quite the go to work. What it is, is they're going to come to class. It is in the afternoon, I apologize. But it's in the afternoon, and for five weeks, they will meet. For four weeks, they will go heavily into a career pathway, whether that be law enforcement, or education, or tourism and um, hotel industry. From Naviance, and you guys are gonna learn about Naviance, from Naviance, you're going to, we're going to take the most popular career pathways, and we're gonna provide opportunities for our students to learn about those pathways. Four different ones, they will have a culminating project in the end with all this information that they've gained. Our hope is that at the end of this job shadowing experience, the children will be ready next summer to go to interns and have a better idea of what they want to do and where they want to go. So, exciting, exciting stuff that we have that we're super excited to be able to offer. Um, I think that's it for me. Can I take any questions because I am going to step out. Is there any questions specifically for me? Summer school. Ask me, sister. Why does it matter how many people are in class? Because the University of, because I can only offer so many seats. Okay, so I'm only allowed so many seats. I paid for 15 class, 15 seats. And every time I move up or down, it costs me something different. So, uh, most of it is cost. Yes? Sorry, most of it is cost. The question she asked is why does it matter if I have 15 students or more? Most of it is cost for summer school. Any other questions for me? No, thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here and for, for giving us some time to explain what we do and why we do it. Have a good evening. So I'm also the Naviance site manager, and so we're gonna transition to the Naviance piece, but I actually need to run. So if there's a parent here that needs help getting in, I'm right at the end of this table by Dr. Higa. So if you're a parent and you need me to help jump you into Naviance, please come see me now, because then I gotta run, I'm so sorry, okay? Um, but yeah, come see me in the back if you need help getting in. I'm gonna turn it over to grade level counselor, Ms. Kathy Shelby. 
Good evening, parents. It's good to see so many of you out here. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the part of the evening that's about Naviance, and I hope that you folks are able to connect to the internet because we're gonna be using it this evening. For our agenda tonight, what we're gonna cover is what the purposes of the technical name is, or the full name is Naviance Family Connection. We're gonna do an overview of what grades nine through 12 cover in guidance class and the Naviance tasks that are required. Um, then I'm gonna give you a little tour um, and then we'll open it up for questions with, with PAR, with the folks from PAR. Okay, so the purpose of Naviance, it's an online resource that helps students explore their interests and identify their strengths. There's various assessments that they use to do this. Um, helps them to create some plans. It helps them to research colleges and careers. And then when they become seniors, they're gonna use Naviance as a tool as part of the college admissions process for applying to college. At Kamehameha, Naviance has been a tri-campus. That would be with our sister neighbor island campuses. It's been a tri-campus effort since 2014. And we use it for all of the purposes that you see here, for college, um, self-discovery, career exploration, learning about the work world, college applications, resume building. All right, in ninth grade, we focus in guidance with our Naviance tasks on learning about themselves and a little bit of career exploration. In 10th grade, what we're doing right now is we're just kind of continuing that, going a little bit more in depth. 11th grade, we start focusing more on preparing and planning for college. And then 12th grade, we use Naviance more as a tool to help with the college application and scholarship um, process. So just as an overview, for 9th grade, these are our freshman guidance <laughs> topics. And we have certain Naviance tasks at each grade level that are required for students to complete. And those tasks are infused in the guidance lessons. Um, I think Mrs. Chong had mentioned that we meet usually about six to 10 times a year. So for freshman year last year, we did kind of an introduction to guidance. We took the students over to the student support center to introduce them to the services there. We talked a little bit. The tools for freshman year were basically study skill tools. We did some career exploration. We talked about registration. Our outreach counselors came and taught a session on healthy relationships. And then we started with building the resume. Okay, so the Naviance tasks that are infused in freshman guidance are these. We did a learning style inventory, which I'm going to let you look at tonight. Um, we also did this um, career cluster finder. So the career clusters are groups of careers that have similar characteristics that a student might be interested in. So in freshman year, we're kind of more focused on kind of general career areas, and then we fine tune it during sophomore year. So some of these careers, they added to a list in Naviance, which, are, which we'll go through. Every single year, they're gonna do this thing called the game plan survey. So we usually do this at the end of the school year. It's in Naviance. And students ask, answer some basic questions about what they want to do after high school, what their plans are. And then we let them redo this or update it every year so that by the senior year, they have a good idea of what their game plan is. We also introduce in ninth grade what a resume is and how to create one. And there's a resume building tool in Naviance. Okay, 10th grade, sophomore guidance. Um, we do a PSCT orientation. We do something called MI Advantage. This is what we just covered last week in sophomore guidance. MI stands for multiple intelligences. We're gonna cover registration. We're gonna go over PSAT results. We're gonna um, fine tune from large cluster career areas to more fine tuned um, specific career interests that they may be interested in which is through the career interest profiler. Then our outreach counselors will come in and teach a lesson on making Pono choices. And then we'll go back to updating resume again and doing the game plan update. Okay, so these are the things, these are the Naviance tasks that we will complete sophomore year. Junior guidance. Okay, junior guidance. 
they begin attending college representative visits on campus. And those are when representatives from colleges, both local and mainland, come to campus to meet with small groups of students to do a presentation about the college and to answer the students' individual questions. So those begin junior year. Um, then we also go through another PSAT orient orientation. College knowledge, I believe they're just covering right now in junior guidance, and it's a session that kind of introduces students to college terminology, because there's all this language involved with colleges, the FAFSA and, you know, um, early decision and early, you know, all kinds of things, there's all kinds of terminology. So we, we do a lesson on that so that they're familiar when they begin the college application process with what they need to know. We go through registration for senior year, and then we have a session on what, college, what, um, what colleges consider when they're looking at students to admit. So what is it that a college admissions committee is looking at? For student athletes, there's also a workshop for the NCAA and NAIA. So the Naviance tasks that are infused is that we do require that they sign up for college representative visits in Naviance, and we will teach them how to do that. There's a survey called Do What You Are. They will update their resume and their game plan. Um, they will do this college search program called Supermatch. I'm gonna just kind of barely introduce you to that tonight. And then they will start adding colleges to their list. So they're not applying yet, but they're saying, I'm thinking of these particular colleges that I may be interested in. Senior year. This is when we're in the heavy duty part of college admissions. So we have a senior guidance session that introduces them to college applications. Some colleges have their own applications and then there's this also this other thing called the common application. And the common application is um, one application that's used by hundreds of colleges that you only have to fill out once and then send it electronically to the colleges. Okay, so we'll go over that with them senior year. We do a transcript review. We actually do a transcript re review every year in guidance but we'll do a thorough, for sure, this is your final chance kind of transcript review senior year. We'll go over graduation requir requirements. We'll check in with them about their college applications. And then we have several sessions in senior guidance about financial aid and scholarships. Um, and then we talk about our last session is what's next, what's, what's gonna happen after high school. The Naviance tasks, we do require our students to take either the SAT or the ACT, and if they haven't done this by senior year, they definitely need to. We encourage them to start taking these tests junior year, and we'll talk to them about it further in guidance. They do need to attend some college rep visits, re update their resume, update their ga game plan, or complete it because it's senior year, and then complete the FAFSA. That's the free application for federal student aid that is the main financial aid applications that students use for applying for financial aid to college. Um, they are required to apply to at least one college and also some scholarships. So that is our guidance topics and our Naviance tasks. Okay, so now let's just do a little hands-on tour of Naviance. If you can get online, that would be great. I believe that this is where parents would log on at this address here, connection.naviance.com slash kapalama. Okay, if anybody's having any trouble, you can maybe raise your hand and hopefully somebody can help. Is everybody on? Was they able to connect? Okay. Okay, so once you get onto Naviance, the homepage looks something like this, right? I hope this is where everybody's at. And you can see that there's four tabs across the top that say colleges, career, careers about me and my planner. I'm actually gonna work Japanese style from right to left. So I'm gonna start with my planner. Okay, my planner takes you to this page. Okay, so what we're gonna look at first is that purple tab, tasks that are assigned to me. So this is your child's tasks. Okay, when you click on that, you get a list, right? Okay, the tasks that have been completed so far, 
those are things that were completed either in ninth grade or so far in 10th grade. So in 10th grade, what we completed this year was just last week, the MI Advantage 2.0. Everything else was done in ninth grade. Okay, then tasks you need to work on. These are things that we will do the rest of this year and we will be completing by the end of the year. Okay, so you can see what your child has done, maybe what he or she still needs to do. Okay, then if we move to the left, there's a tab that says About Me. And under us, My Assessments, in ninth grade, your children took a learning style inventory. So if you click on that, you will actually be able to see the results. And what the learning style inventory is about is basically what are your child's learning preferences? What are the conditions that they learn best under it? Because this really varies widely from student to student. So you can see when you look at the results, which should look something like this, it's a bar graph, that on either end, the far right and the far left, these are your child's preferred style. So if the arrow is pointing that way, then that would be your child's preferred style, okay? If there's no preference, then you'll see arrows in the middle, kind of like at the bottom of the screen. So in this student's case, I know it's hard for you to read, but really, he or she didn't have much preference. I'm having a hard time reading it. Um, low persistence, high persistence, not too much preference there. But there was a definite pref preference for bright light, okay? Some people study better with dim light. Some like to have a little music in the background. Some like to have complete quiet. Um, it really is kind of telling about your child. Some people do much better studying earlier in the day or later in the day. So hopefully maybe you'll learn a little bit about your child's preferences by looking at this. If you want more information, you can view the full report. You can click on that and that'll give you more of a narrative style about what the results were for your child's learning style inventory. Okay, is everybody following me so far? Is anybody like, what is she talking about? <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so if you go back to About Me, that, um, learning style inventory is what we did in ninth grade. So what we just did last week in 10th grade this year was MI, Multiple Intelligences Advantage. If you click on that, you'll be able to see your child's results for this survey that we just did last week. So the concept of multiple intelligences is that a student has a variety of intelligences, so there's not just one or two kinds and that strengths can be used in a whole bunch of different ways for the student to be successful. They also can be developing these intelligences further. You can, you can further develop what you already have as strengths, or you can develop what some of your challenges are. Your profile in terms of your strengths can change as you, as you mature, as you have life experiences. So last week when we were teaching this in guidance, I used an example of a student I had who was a Kamehameha graduate, and I ran into her when she was a student at UH, and she said, you're never going to believe what I discovered about myself, and I said, what? Okay, so keep in mind that this is a Kamehameha grad, went to through four years of high school here. Lots of exposure to singing at this school, right? Song contest every year, tons of rehearsals never was interested in singing, was not in concert glee, just kind of went through the program, but it wasn't her thing. She told me, I'm singing opera. I had no idea I had a voice even. So it's a good example of how an intelligence, such as music, can be further developed at different times in our lives. Okay, this is what we shared with the students are the nine different intelligences that are going to or were assessed by this MI Advantage survey. So we kind of did a little brief description of each of them. So I know this is hard to read. I'll just kind of go through them. Um, the one on the upper right, naturalist. So students who are strong in this area are students who enjoy being in the outdoors. They like working outdoors. Maybe an office job in the future may not be for them. Um, they really like the biological and the life in the earth sciences. So things like biology, 
um, geology, botany, marine science, those are things that they like because they enjoy that um, outdoors, living things kind of exposure. Musical, so it is what it says, okay? So people who are musical can discern sound, they can discern pitch, they have rhythm. Um, obviously musicians are natural at this. Logical, mathematical. Okay, so this is used a lot in school, right? This is one of those skills that we do use in school. Uh, you quantify things, you make hypotheses, um, you like um, trying to prove or disprove those hypotheses. Existential is students who are more abstract in their thinking and they kind of enjoy kind of the philosophical questions of life, like why are we here? What's the purpose of life? Why do human beings exist? Um, those are people who are strong in existential intelligence. Interpersonal, I explain to the students that inter means between us, between people. So people who can read other people really well in terms of their feelings or emotions or people who understand people's motives well without having to guess a lot are people who are good at interpersonal skills. Bodily kinesthetic, okay, so students who are really good at movement. So this could be dancers, this could be athletes. Um, these are people who have a good coordination between their mind and their body. Linguistic, students who are great with language, who, who use words well, put them together, have good reading skills, um, articulate. Intrapersonal, okay, so inter is between us, intra is within myself, okay, so students who know themselves well, who understand their feelings, they understand who they are, um, are, are um, strong at intrapersonal. And last but not least, spatial. Okay, so if, if your child is really good at 3D understanding, um, they may have strong spatial skills. So this would be people who end up in careers often like pilots or architects or engineers. Um, if your child loves geometry, it's a good chance that they have strong spatial skills. Okay, so these are the areas, the nine areas that were assessed on the MI Advantage assessment. So, your child's results is, came out in a bar graph, right? Did everybody, is everybody able to see your child's results? And it was so interesting, Mrs. Chong and I um, team taught this course, I mean this particular session together, it was so interesting what a wide variety of bar graphs we saw. We saw some that looked like this, where it was real clear there were certain strengths, okay, and we saw some that had a lot, a lot of strengths in a lot of areas, like eight out of the nine, they were really strong. Um, and then we had some that had one clear strength and the other ones not so much. So it was really very interesting. In this particular one, the person's strongest is bodily kinesthetic with the second one being existential, which is kind of interesting. Okay. If you want more information, you can again view the full report. And then this is what we did actually in class is we looked at the related careers. Whoops, sorry, I went ahead of myself there. So we had them click on see related careers. And what happens is based on that bar graph, their um, strengths, it gave them a list of careers that would match what their strengths are. And then they could click on the career and find out more about the career. Okay. Okay. So, speaking of, the next tab over is careers. Okay, so if you click on favorite careers and clusters, this is kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can see it on your, your child's own um, profile here. Okay, so at the top you see my careers and then there's a list. Okay, this list came from the MI Advantage survey. So your child looked at the list, clicked on the ones they wanted to add, and these were the careers that they said that they might be interested in, okay? Underneath that, it says my saved career clusters and pathways. This is something they actually did in ninth grade, because remember we did the cluster finder? Okay, so these were the clusters they, ser they, um, they saved, and it's the general areas of careers, okay? 
And then there's below that suggested careers and clusters. So there's more things that they can look at that might be related to their strengths. Okay, also in careers, there's another wonderful resource. And by the way, I'm only giving you a sampling of Naviance because there's so much stuff in Naviance to be discovered. It's just really amazing. But we're just kind of doing a sample tour here. So if you go back to the careers tab, there's a thing called Road Trip Nation. And what Road Trip Nation is, it's a repository of over 3,500 little videos that students can click on and watch. And the videos are short, okay? So it can be anywhere from 20 seconds to maybe two or three minutes long. And what they've done is um, they've taken a bus around the country of high school students and college students and they've interviewed people who are successful in their fields. One of them happens to, I think, be Jake Shimabukuro, um, who made the Road Trip Nation. And they talk about things like, how did you get into your career? Why were you interested? Who helped you along the way? What motivates you? What were some of the rough parts of it? Okay, so there's all these little things. You can look at it by career. You can search by interest. You can search by theme. So a theme would be something like encouragement. So you can look at all these videos that are about encouragement or about um, overcoming struggle. Okay, so this is a wonderful resource for kids. Yeah. Okay, she asked if they take these assessments different years. Um, they did, if your children were here in middle school, they did take several of these in middle school and then we had them do them again in high school. And of course, what do they usually say? I already did that. Okay, but we tell them, <laughs> we remind them that they do grow, they do change. Okay, so, so we do it from middle school to high school. We don't keep doing, at, like for instance, MI Advantage through senior year. They do update their resume, they do update their game plan for college every year. But if they wanted to, I think they could go back in and take it again if they wanted to. Yeah. And that's okay. Are we talking about you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so what you're, oh, maybe I'll just talk directly to Kaipo here. Um, is this so? Oh, him. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's him. Okay. Okay. So what you're saying, what you're saying, is that your result did not match your interest or your what you think your strengths are. Okay. It could be just sort of the way you answered those particular questions, and if you retook it, it might come out differently. But I think what you should maybe do is sit down with your counselor, and we can talk about, we can look at it, we can kind of go over it together, and we can see why you answered what you answered. And it is an assessment, and assessments are a tool to help us understand, but they don't understand everything about us, you know? Like I can remember um, when I was growing up, and we used to take these career assessments, I had really high on flight attendant, but I'm five feet tall, and I don't meet the requirement <laughs> for a flight attendant. So, I mean, there are things that an assessment can't measure or doesn't take into consideration, but I'd be interested to sit down with, with um, are you, you, but you're Mrs. Chong's student, right? Yeah. Sorry, okay. Um, Mrs. Chong would love to sit down with you. She's, she's waving her arms back there, and, um, she would love to sit down with you and just kind of look at how, why you answered what you answered, and we can probably figure out how it turned out the way it did. Okay? Does that answer your question? Mom? Okay, great. Okay. Okay, last but not least, colleges. Okay? We're gonna focus on this tab more at the end of 10th grade and through 11th and 12th grade. And I just want to show you a few things. And again, you, you have every right, mom and dad, to go into Naviance and look at all these different tabs because there's so many things. I'm just going to give you a few examples. OK, if you click on this thing called College Maps that's under College Research, OK, and I'm going to look at colleges where our students are attending. So it will pull up a map. 
of where Kamehameha students are attending college. And there will be a red flag for each college. And if you put your mouse over the flags, it will tell you the name of the college. Okay, and then it also has on the right an alphabetical list of all of the colleges that our students are attending. Okay, so that's just kind of a cool thing. Okay, and then another thing within colleges that I kind of mentioned earlier is this thing called Supermatch, and students really like working with this. We'll introduce it to them at the end of 10th grade. But if you click on Supermatch, you get a page that looks like this, okay? And what you're able to do is to pick the criteria, and this is actually just partial list of the criteria because I had to cut it off because I was screenshotting it. But you get a full list and you can pick things like, what location do I want the college to be in? Um, what's the school size I'm interested in? Am I interested in a public or a private institution? Maybe a religious, religiously affiliated institution? And you pick all these criteria and then you click on the button and it magically gives you this list of things that match your criteria. And it tells you whether it's 100% match or 85% match. And it's a wonderful place for students to start searching for colleges, okay? All right, what are some things that parents can do to help? Naviance is a tool to assist your child to learn about him or herself a little bit better. Um, it hopefully will facilitate dialogue between you. And I'm hoping that maybe just a little bit you sample tonight will give you a starting point to talk to your child. Um, this is always my mantra with parents is that hopefully we will seek to guide for, versus micromanage. And it's a really fine line between the two. I'm sure the parents are all aware of that. Um, that, that micromanaging is when we start kind of getting in and doing things for our students. Um, rather than guiding them to do it themselves, okay? But it is, it, it is easy to micromanage, especially when you're frustrated, yes? Is that true? Okay, hopefully we want you to, or we encourage you to recognize and respect your child's uniqueness because I'm sure that anybody who has kids knows that each kid is really unique and different from each other. We hope that you can respect your child's journey and honor it because we all, when we look at our lives, when we have a different perspective as adults than students have when they're in high school, but our journeys in life were very unique to us, right? I mean, most of us take a winding kind of path in life. We thought we were gonna go here, but we ended up going there. And that's your child's journey also is very unique to him or herself. Okay, and then we hope you'll celebrate your child's successes. So, if they move from a B to an A, yay, you know? If they got off of academic probation, yay, okay? If they decided to try out for concert glee even though they're petrified, yay, okay? So we just wanna help them celebrate their successes. Okay, so basically I think I'm going to turn it over to um, Par for some questions. Um, does anybody have any questions for me right offhand that I can answer? Yes. Um, we will talk about it a little bit more, especially in junior guidance. At some point, they can actually roll that list over into from colleges I'm thinking about to colleges I'm applying for. And then once they get into the application process, then yes, we definitely become a lot more involved. But certainly they can make an appointment to see us when they're in 11th and 12th grade. They will, in addition to us, we're grade level counselors. They will have college counselors who meet individually also with them but I am always willing to talk college with students. In fact, it's one of my favorite subjects. So yeah, certainly they can make an appointment. I'm open. Okay, okay. thank you, stay right here. Um, and Dr. Higa, if you'll come up here. So here's what I wanna do first in the interest of time, is all of you received one of these when you came in. I want you to fill out the evals now, and then we'll collect it and we'll tear off the bottom. So we need to get the eval in order to, for you to qualify your name to go into the, and so we'll do that. I'll give you a, a minute or so. And then um, we'll collect, we'll get ready, and then we'll go to questions, and in between we'll pull so that you can go home sooner, okay? 
All right, questions? Questions? Yes, I'm gonna go ahead, then I'll make sure we're all here. Are there any costs associated with dual credit? Yes, um, so KS has a partnership with all the institutions. KS pays for the tuition. KS also pays for any materials or supplies. The only thing that the families have to pay is the registration fee for the college. So that's $50 for HPU and $80 for any of the UH Manoa system schools, except for community colleges, those are free. However, if you get KS financial aid, partial or full, KS will reimburse you that amount. So in essence, there's a very small cost, but KS pays the majority of that. And when you consider the cost per credit in a college, that is an amazing opportunity. Yes. So the question is then summer school's not here, so we'll pass that on. And I know there is a reason, do we know? So the question real quick is if classes fill up in 27 seconds, why don't they offer another one? So we have a special, um, so we offer all of these courses, many of them during the school year as well. So we offer so many seats so that we also have them for students during the school year. So it's, we're trying a lot of these online courses out. This is only the third year I believe we're doing online. So last year we only had one course. So this year we're doubling it. We have two courses now. So there are more seats. Um, we also have... Yes, that's part of the conversation. So we always have to look at all of the different factors. Um, so that's one of the issues. But that's not the only one. Um, we also have to make sure that kids can meet the prerequisites that they have and we also have recommendations that are given for some of the courses. Like we have the honors, yeah. So we have to kind of look at all of the factors together. But I think it's a noted concern. And our curriculum coordinator in conjunction with summer school director definitely talk about it all the time. Because from my mind and a parent too is, well, make one out of class. <laughs> but it's not as simple as we think. It's not as simple as we think, yes. Are the BYU summer courses still available? So those are not dual credit courses. Um, the ones that are offered for dual credit are the ones that we have memorandum of understandings with. So the, the schools that we had the different um, logos for, those are the schools that we're offering um, dual credit. Yes, BYU, that is uh, for special arrangement and you would work with your counselor. I might just mention, because we just had a conversation about that, for those of you who are looking at NCAA, um, those kinds of things, you need to make sure that these credits are accepted in the NCAA. And do you guys know about that? Can you speak to that? Because that's big. Go ahead. So either one of us could answer that. Um, so the BYU courses are not NCAA approved. Um, however, depending on what other courses that the student has taken, they usually end up with enough, even if they did take a BYU course or two over summer. So it kind of just depends on the student's individual courses. Um, and then some courses, such as personal health, that a lot of the kids take through BYU, um, that one isn't one of the BYU or NCAA requirements anyway. So yeah, so there's ways to work around it, but we do sort of try to look more carefully at the student athletes for the BYU courses. It would be easier if they don't take BYU courses, but there are ways to make it work. Would you add anything to that? That's okay. Check with us. Check, yeah, check with us so we can work it out. Yeah. I just wanted to distinguish the difference between the Florida virtual school that the KS summer school is offering. Those programs actually have a very strong um, student component. So they will call your student, they will text your student, they will text you. Uh, so they really are monitoring your student's progress along the way. So that's something that you might want to consider in an online environment where the kids are not coming to a face-to-face -face place. So that's one of the um, strong points about the Florida Virtual Online School that um, Kella talked about. Right here, go ahead. The internships are not paid because they're getting credit. So when the, the internship programs become available in summer school, you need to be clear 
that it is for credit and not for pay. There are some opportunities for pay, but that's not through us. It could be through other, you check the daily bulletins. I know the IT department offers something. Um, there were several out of Kauai Ha'o Plaza that offered paid internships. So ours are for credit. Can this be watched again? Yes. We are going to post it on our website, the PAR website. We'll send out something to all 10th grade parents that says, here it is, the PAR points and all of that information that you might have been trying to, it'll all be on there. Okay, and mahalo to our, our IT and AV and they, <laughs> big setup. Questions, this side, anybody? Oh, are we ready to pull names, Larry? All right, let's do the first two. So here's the deal. We have some smaller things. We have some t-shirts that were donated from Warrior Printing. And then at the end, we're gonna put everybody's name back in. For the two big prizes, which is $50 of Ho'olalea script and a parking pass, which is worth way more than $50. <laughs> I want you to know. All right, first name. No, I don't wanna reach, I have our counselors reach. <laughs> First name. Good. That's these two. All right. Good. Go ahead. Dane Kauluko Chang. Where are ya? Dane? Okay, okay. Good. Second one. Renee Arita. Renee, right here. Yay. All right, now these gotta go back in, yeah? So hold on to them. All right. One more question. Question? None? Yes. Hang on, since I'm right. Oh, um, I had asked earlier about the seats and why there has to be like a certain amount of people, but I think like she didn't understand my question because I was asking why, she answered why there was like a minimum amount, which makes sense, but I was wondering why there was a maximum amount because it's not like a classroom, so. Why is there a maximum? Oh, you mean for the online classes, why is there a maximum? Do we know? There's usually a, a ratio, teacher-student ratio, that is optimal. So you want to make sure that that one teacher can service all of the people. So you can't have like 100 to 1, because that would be really difficult to make sure that kind of uh, service level is, is strong. But you still have a teacher. It's just not in a, a classroom, but yeah, yes. you got to interact with that teacher. That teacher has to send you... They facilitate yeah. the conversation, so if you yeah. have a question, they'll respond to you. They also assess your work. So it's not like you don't have a teacher. So you want to yeah. have a strong teacher-student ratio so that you get um, the best quality out of the online experience. Yeah, so that, that helps. Good question. Okay, two more names. Quick, 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 can sit down? <laughs> and then you gotta think of one more question. What? Okay, so the t-shirts, here's how the t-shirts work. We only have certain sizes. If you are called first, you get to choose one that fits you. <laughs> if you are at the end, you gotta take what there is. Samantha K. Nakagawa. Come, up there, Samantha, choose whatever size you want, dear. Next one. Shirley Dayton. Shirley Dayton, choose a t-shirt up there. Yep, go ahead, you gotta walk up there. Okay, question. No? All right, two more names. Oh. Laurie, leave us the bag, dear. No more questions, you sure? No more questions about anything? Go ahead, go ahead. Did you all hear that? Back there? Okay. Okay, I think the question was if a student takes regular chemistry and then takes AP chemistry, do they get credit for both? Is that the question? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, toward graduation. Yeah, I guess I have had, a, on a rare occasion, I've had students graduate that way. Yeah, because they do it with biology and AP biology. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Usually it's three different sciences, but it could be AP Bio, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, and regular. Yeah. 
So one is might be a prereq to the next. Regular AP, I mean regular physics to AP physics. Right. Okay. Right. It could, yeah. Okay. Does that help? I have to think about. All right. That. Next two: Tyler Sakata and Karen Kaupu. Choose a shirt. Hold on to that. Question: No. How many more shirts we got there? Ellen Kahok. Ellen Kahoku Baker, you guys are so good. You put your full, full name. Mm -hmm. You follow directions. Okay. How many more? One more shirt. Christine Zalop Zalopemi? Ah, all right. Okay, these got to go back in. Everything goes back in. No more questions. Last two. Okay, if some, is that a question back there? Okay. Sorry, let me come there. Let me come there. Okay, so my daughter. So we are on KS Connect grades. Report card. Okay, she had a dual credit for Japanese three. However, she's a sophomore. So is the A a 4.5 or 5.0? Is that the question? 5.0. 5.0. Yay. <laughs> Questions back here since I'm at the back of the room. Yes, question here. Question here. Sorry, TV man, for running all over. So for the summer school courses, can my daughter take online, one online, like home ec online, and maybe internship? No, I know the answer to that. Internships are a full class, and to do both in the summer, I, I'm almost certain is a no. Yeah. One of the things about internships when we first started it, because it's in partnership with my office, is, sorry, the students cannot take a regular class and an internship. It's just too hard to do. Just to clarify. Call Kella and find out for sure. The Japanese 3 student would only get a 5.0 if they opted in to dual credit and completed all of the paperwork. So just to clarify. The clarification for you, do one more time. So if you are in the Japanese 3 class, the only way you could get the 5.0 is if you opted into the dual credit and completed all of the forms. Before you POW or any time? No, at the beginning of the semester. So if you're already enrolled in the class, uh, your child as well as the parents will get an email with all the directions. So you would need usually have about a month to get all the paperwork submitted. So I've been watching all of this dual credit paperwork is coming in through the summer school office, right? And your office. And the paperwork is what's killing them. It's not coming in. You are not getting it. You and your children are not getting it done. And if they're really serious about dual credit and to get it in, it is beginning college. By the time they got out of high school, they could have how many? Six college credits? Or more. Or more. 20, that Hawaiian language one. Yeah. So think about that. How much money you save on college credits if you are serious about this and do all the paperwork. So that's important. Okay, I think we're ready to pull the last two, yes? Okay, I'm not pulling. <laughs> you shake them out real good. Shake them out real good. I'll let our two counselors call the name. So the first one is for the $50. Karen Kaupu. Karen. <laughs> Where are you? Now remember, we put it all back in. All back in. We put everybody back in because if you want the shirt, it's like, but I want the script. Right? It just gives everybody opportunity for the big prize. You, you can't say no if you want to say no. All right, next one. Caitlin Arakaki. Caitlin Arakaki. Where's Caitlin? They left? Seriously? Okay. Gotta be present to win. That's on the flyer. Gotta be present to win. So you tell Caitlin she missed that VIP parking pass. Seriously, she left. They really left? Oh, I really am sad, but it's on. It's on. It's on there. Go ahead. 
Gaylene Matsuura. Gaylene Matsuura. Yay! <laughs> VIP. And you may not sell this, okay? You cannot sell your pass. <laughs> Gotta be you. Thank you so much, all of you. Round of applause for all of our presenters. Uh, Lori, our organizer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? The answer is no. Yes? Is that what she said? Oh, oh. So the answer is no to that summer school class about taking two with internship and, okay. Mahalo, everyone.